Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. <laughs> This is Europe, and here's Romania. Now let's go, shall we? The stunningly scenic land of Romania has been inhabited for a very, 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 very long time. During the Neolithic age, peaceful, classless communities farmed the good, rich earth with tools made from stone and antlers. Hugging the Black Sea coast in the east was another archaic culture with a pretty chill, laid-back kind of art. Centuries later, we hear tell of a Thracian tribe in the south called the Geti, whom the Greek historian Herodotus referred to as the bravest and most upright of all the Thracians. To the west arose a related group some consider the same, others different, called the Dacians, fierce warriors who fought with a weapon called the Falx, the largest variety of which was a two-handed polearm with a big menacing blade of curved iron. In the first century BC, the Dacian tribes were united under Borebista, who conquered a number of peoples and collided, in so doing, with the Romans, making an enemy of none other than Julius Caesar in the process. Caesar was planning to invade Dacia, but instead found himself invaded by a number of daggers when he was assassinated. Dacia's next big thing was Decebalus, who defeated a Roman army during the reign of Domitian. But when Emperor Trajan ascended the throne, things changed. Rome's armies returned and defeated the Dacians in two successive battles. Rather than face capture and shame, Decebalus killed himself. The Romans chopped his head off and took it back to their capital as a trophy. Thus Dacia was added to the Roman Empire, and the region was Romanized, and Rome's language, Latin, is the parent of modern Romanian. Now, now, Dacia was located in a tricky spot and was highly susceptible to troublesome invaders. So Emperor Aurelian made the decision in the year 271 to withdraw Rome's forces stationed there. In the dark, messy, swirling centuries that followed, the land was invaded by a myriad of peoples. Goths and Gepids and Huns and Magyars and Avars and Bulgars and Slavs. Now amidst all this confusion, let's take a quick look at the modern borders of Romania. The three main historical sections of the country were Wallachia, Moldavia and Trans. Pennsylvania. And so... What about Dobroja? Yes, Dobroja, you're important too. Dobroja. Anyway, these borders were far from being concrete in medieval times, when other nations were all too eager to gobble up more ground. The Hungarians, for instance, had a very firm foot in Transylvania. But Hungarian lordship over Wallachia ended with Wallachia's victory in the Battle of Posada in the year 1330 under the I. Around 30 years later, Bogdan I managed to do the same thing for Moldavia, and proximity to Bulgarians and Byzantines encouraged the spread of Orthodox Christianity, which remains the dominant faith of Romania today. And speaking of dominating, the Ottoman Turks were very big on that sort of thing as they conquered out an empire, including chunks of Eastern Europe. And while the Ottomans were no strangers to cruelty, even they were shocked at the brutality of this man here, Wallachia's Vlad III, also known as Dracula, son of the dragon, whose most grandiose act of barbarism was having over 20,000 Turks impaled on sharpened wooden stakes, hence the nickname Vlad the Impaler. So while he wasn't a vampire like the fictional Count Dracula concocted by Bram Stoker in his famous 1897 novel, the real Dracula was far more bloodthirsty a figure. This was also the time of Stephen the Great of Moldavia, a superb military leader, tireless builder, and strong effective ruler who oversaw a time of stability and growth. Skipping ahead to the late 1500s, the Habsburg monarchy began challenging the Ottoman presence in Romanian lands. And in the year 1600, Wallachian Prince Michael the Brave, and he'd have to be brave walking around in a hat like that, united Wallachia, Moldavia and Transylvania. <laughs> thus uniting the Romanian princedoms for the first time. It didn't last long, but it would inspire future nationalists in realizing that unity again. European powers succeeded in weakening the Ottoman position in Europe, but Turkish control remained in Moldavia and Wallachia. As for Transylvania, <laughs> it came under Habsburg Hungarian control. In the following century, the Habsburgs pinched a portion of Moldavia, and in 1812 the Russians took the eastern section of Moldavia, called Bessarabia. The modern nation of Moldova was formed from that bit. Now after the Russians defeated the Turks in this war, Russian influence was added to that of the Ottomans in Wallachia and Moldavia. Those regions did not like this influence, and in 1848 rose up in revolution against them. They were crushed. However, in 1859, under Prince Alexandru, Wallachia and Moldavia 
Moldavia joined together and became known as Romania. But it wasn't until the reign of his successor, Carol I, that Romania gained its independence after fighting on the side of Russia in the Russo-Turkish War. Romania also gained northern Dobruja after that same conflict. Dobruja! Carol ushered Romania into the 20th century and beautified the capital, Bucharest. In 1917, as Russia collapsed in revolution, Bessarabia rejoined Romania, and that bit the Habsburgs had pinched was returned, and not long afterwards, Transylvania rejoined Romania. But this enlarged Romania did not Romania though. In the deathly midst of World War II, it lost quite a lot of land, including Bessarabia to the USSR. This agitated era fostered the rise of Ion Antonescu. As Prime Minister, he allied with Adolf Hitler and began attacking and deporting Roma people and Jews, many thousands of whom were killed. After the war, he was put on trial for war crimes and executed. As communism took root in Romania, the king was pressured to abdicate and Stalinist policies were implemented. Under the leadership of Nicolae Ceausescu, Romania's post-Stalin breaths of relief were stifled after 1971, when he became more and more Stalinesque in his totalitarian methods of governance. His handling of economics was disastrously flawed, and the people suffered horribly. But this didn't stop him from ordering a magnificent, massive, monumental palace to be built for himself. Of course, there's only so much misery the people can shoulder and endure, and in 1989, they rose up in a revolution. Ceausescu Ceausescu was overthrown, and he and his wife Elena were shot dead by a firing squad. Romania's economy grew well in the 2000s, and it joined NATO, and it joined the EU, and despite some lingering problems, the country today has achieved a very high level of human development, and the status of a high-income economy. And let's hope the improvements accumulate for this country that has given us such greatness in science, sports, the arts, and food deliciousness. So that's it for Romania, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye <laughs>